Hello friends, welcome to our channel Knowledge Amplifier. So today we are back with another video tutorial related to Snowpark with Python. And we are basically going to explore how to read JSON data from external stage using Snowpark and load in a Snowflake table after applying certain transformation like flattening and all. Okay. So already in our previous video, we discussed fundamental concepts related to Snowpark. We discussed how to read the data from a Snowflake table, how to process that and load in a destination table. Also, we discussed how to read the data from a Snowflake external stage if the data is stored in CSV or Parquet format and how after applying transformation, how to load them in a Snowflake table. That also we discussed in our previous video. If you want to know those detailed explanations, you can go through the link given in the description box. So today what we are going to discuss is related to JSON data loading from external stage to a snowflake table. And for this discussion, I have taken the JSON representation of our ID data set. As you can see, ID is one column, then sepal length, sepal width, petal length, petal width and class name, right? Class name is string type, ID is integer type, sepal length, sepal width, petal length, petal width are basically double type data, okay? Now this JSON data we have uploaded in S3 external stage JSON dataset within ID setup bucket and now we will create a snowflake external stage pointing to that S3 location. Okay. So here what we are doing first, we are dropping a database if it exists and the database name is Ramu. Then we are creating that fresh database. We are using that database and we are creating a file format with type JSON. Okay. So let me execute all of them one by one. Okay. All are done. Now here what we are doing pointing to our ID setup bucket within JSON dataset folder where actually our JSON data we have uploaded to that particular location we are creating a snowflake stage and this external stage name is snow simple okay to set up the integration between snowflake and AWS we are using AWS access key secret key based authentication but as you know obviously you can use the IAM role based authentication also not a problem okay and here we are mentioning the file format also which is JSON data for file format we have created here. Now here if I now execute list command on our this particular stage here it will return me the sample JSON data what is available in our this external stage right. So external stage is ready now let's see the setup with respect to snow part okay. So here what we are doing first we are importing all the necessary modules so let me import them. So here I am opening a Python terminal and I have pasted all of them. Okay. Then as part of the next step, we need to provide the connection parameters. Here we need to provide the account ID. Here this is the unique identifier for our account which is available here and the account region is usist1. So account unique identifier dot usist1 we are providing. User ID password we will provide. Role name, warehouse, database and schema what we are going to utilize. That one also we have configured. Okay. So here I will just provide user ID and password and execute this part. So I have configured the user ID password and here I executed this particular dictionary. And now here what we are doing, we are creating the session. If the connection strings are provided correctly, here the session will be created and it will go to the next line, right? Now it is just like reading the data in Spark, what we do, same like Parquet. That is Spark.read.json, similarly a session.read.json we are using, okay? And here we are pointing to the external stage where our JSON data is sitting, right? So here let me execute this particular code. That is fine. It has worked. Now here, like CSV file read, we no need to mention the JSON schema. Because if you recall our previous videos in Snowflake, the JSON data, it read as variant data type, right? So if you just recall our previous discussion, like if we need to read the data directly from Snowflake external stage and the data is JSON data, then we can execute this kind of command. Directly give the snowflake external stage name and then dollar one. Dollar one is basically our variant column, right? So if we execute this particular select query, it return us the JSON data, whatever is available in a variant data type, right? Here you can see the dollar one is basically column name and these individual rows are basically JSON element displaying what is available in our JSON file. Now let's see how this particular snow park is ready, okay? First, see the column name. So, when reading the data from external stage directly as raw JSON format, we saw the column name is dollar one. Now, in case of Snowpark, also if you observe the column name is dollar one, that is the similarity. And as you can clearly understand, this particular column is variant data type. So, let's see in Snowpark how the column is interpreted. 
see here if I just print this structure, it is showing variant data type. Okay, so it is same like what we do generally in SQL query. Now let's execute dot show command to view the data. So here I have executed dot show, and if you observe, it is returning us that variant data, JSON data only, without flattening it. Okay, class name ID, petal length, petal width, sepal length, sepal width. Then next row again, class name ID, petal length, petal width, sepal length, sepal width, like that. Top 10 rows it is returning as part of dot show command. Okay, now let's flatten this data. So, if you recall our previous video, we did flattening using this key value pair extraction. So, our external stage name is ramu.public.snow simple. That particular stage we are giving alias name t. So, t dot dollar one is basically this particular variant column. And in dollar one variant column, as you can see, class name is one key, id is one key, petal length, petal width, all are keys. So if I want to get the value but corresponding to the key id, so what I will do t dot dollar one, which is basically this column, then colon id. So using this colon, you can basically extract the value but corresponding to the key id, and then we are giving the alias name as id like that t dot dollar one colon sepal length as sepal length, then t dot dollar one colon sepal width as sepal width like that. We are extracting the columns from the variant data, and it is displaying like this way. Okay. If you observe the class name, which is basically string type here, double quotation is coming. So what we generally do in the variant data, we use string function to avoid this kind of double quotation, especially for string data. So here in class name, whatever the double quotation are coming in the beginning and end, that we are trimming out. Okay. So rest part is same. If I just execute that code, it looks like this, which is properly flattened data as part of SQL. Now let's try to implement the same. Using our snow part, okay. So what we did in Snowflake SQL query that dollar one colon id using this when you are selecting it is flattening out from the variant data. So now let's see whether it is doing the same in snow park or not. So here I have executed this command one select query within that we have given the same pattern what we used in SQL and then here we are giving dot show, okay. So here you can clearly see it is throwing an error. Invalid identifier dollar one colon id. So one thing we are understanding that within the select query we cannot put data extraction or flattening part same like what we are using in SQL. Okay, why? It is same like Spark that in Spark also within select query you can just specify the column name which you directly want to extract. Suppose you want to apply certain operation on that column. And then you want to extract the result set of that particular operation. Then we don't use select. We use select expression, right? So similarly, in this case, we have to use select expression. Okay, just like PySpark. Here we are putting the ID extraction part same like our SQL query. Just the changes instead of select, we need to use select expression. So let's execute this, and now let's see whether it is throwing any error or not. So see, it has given the result correct. Okay. So now here we just tested with ID column like that way you can extract all the columns like dollar one column ID sepal length sepal with petal length petal with everything and then you can use dot show to get the complete flattened data. So here we got the data, but the problem in this particular case only is the column names are little bit complex. We need to give proper column name like dollar one colon petal with this column name should be petal with only. Dollar one colon class name. This column name should be class name only. We don't need dollar one colon, right? So for that, what we need to do, we can use with column renamed. So that only I have to use for all the columns. So to avoid multiple times writing with column renamed, I just used a for loop to do the same operation. Okay. So here you can see I created a dictionary where I have mentioned that if this is the old column name, this should be the new column name. So if the column name is Within double quotation dollar one colon id here as you can see it should be converted to only id. If the column name is within double quotation dollar one colon sepal length it should be only converted to sepal length like that. Okay, and then here we are iterating in the dictionary each time we are applying with column renamed with the key where key is basically old column name and the value part is basically new column name like that way with column rename will happen. For all the data, and each time we are updating our main data frame with the modified data frame, and finally we will check whether complete data got updated or not. Okay, right? So here, what I will do, I will copy this particular dictionary 
and paste that here and then here we can basically execute this particular for loop a very simple for loop to do this operation and now let's see whether in this data frame the column names came correctly or not and see here the column names came correctly so this way here we can correct the column name just like sql now the only problem remaining is as we discussed when flattening the data from variant data type if the column is string then in the beginning and end double quotation will come so we can use string function or replace function so here what i am doing i am using replace function so if you observe another data frame i am creating iris flower read 3 equal to iris flower read 2 that is basically this data frame where all the column names are correct from there i am selecting id sepal and sepal with petal and petal with and i am replacing the class name column all the double quotation with nothing okay so that way all the double quotation in the beginning and end will go away and that column name we are giving alias as class name as simple as that so let's execute this particular piece of code so here if i now execute dot show here you see that class name column is properly coming that is no double quotation is coming there right so now we understood how to read the json data how to flatten it now the last part remaining writing the json data okay so we will write two kind of json data one is raw json data which is basically just in raw format whatever we have read from the external stage that we will try to write in a snowflake table so that will be writing in a variant column data so here if you see this iris flower read if i just do dot show here this is having raw json data right so here using snowpark we have read this json data from external stage and now suppose i want to write this particular raw data in snowflake table with the name raw json write so before executing this code you can see that if i just do select start from raw json write here nothing is displayed so now let me execute this particular code okay so because this is json data obviously when it will write it will write in variant data column so here if you see here raw json data now it is showing and it is basically variant data now on top of this you can apply normal sql query to flatten it out just what we discussed earlier like this way that is fine we are reading the data from raw json data extracting individual key value pair and flattening or else what you can do you can read the data directly from s3 external stage and then flatten it out remove the double quotation from varchar data type columns and then modify the column names properly and that process data you can directly write which is stored in iris flower read 3 in our data frame right basically this particular data frame that also we can write in a table called flattened data so if i execute select start from flattened data before executing that code here you can see that it is not existing now let me execute this code and here it is done okay so this particular table will contain the flattened data proper data okay so from S3 external stage you can read the JSON data and either you can write the raw JSON data as variant column in a snowflake table using snowpark or you can flatten it out, process it, clean it and that flattened data you can load in snowflake table both way possible okay right and as we are using append banner so if I execute again then what will happen the count will be doubled like for example if I am executing count of star from this particular table as of now, I will be getting count as 50. Now, if I again execute this particular code, data will be appended. And because they are same data, so 50 plus 50, it will be 100. As simple as that. Right? So, I hope you understood how to work with JSON data. I will be providing the complete code and data set in the description box or in the comment section. So, that parallel you can practice and have fun with it. And obviously, explore the documentation also. Because from the documentation, you can explore much more about different methods related to JSON data processing. The link of the documentation also I will be providing in the description box. So, if you find this video helpful, then please like, share and comment. Subscribe our channel if you have not subscribed till now. And don't forget to press the bell icon to get the notification of our latest videos. Thank you for watching.